up guys and welcome back to the channel in today's video i'm going to be doing yet another follow-up on the matt reese version of the batman film which is said to have a theater release of 2021 ladies and gentlemen so i'm on twitter right now and i am you know looking at a tweet from the gotham hub now the gotham hub has everything related to gotham and its many characters and for one they have been recently tweeting about the batman any version of the batman whether it's christian bales whether it's ben affleck or the newest batman and robert pattinson um now here's a tweet that they have actually found you know from basic basically i guess an interview with matt reeves so this tweet actually says Bruce Wayne will be around 30 years old in Matt Reeves, the Batman. We're actually getting prime Batman. So let's talk about this real quickly because I have a couple of, you know, what the fucks to say about it. Because one, I don't understand how exactly we're getting a prime Batman when this is a new version of Batman entirely because we have never seen the detective side of Batman on screen, you know, in the cinematic universe. Yet alone, we have never had, you know what I'm saying, like a person that has, you know, not the skill level when it comes to, you know, like superheroing because as I said, Robert Pattinson was only known for his role in Twilight, you know? Ben Affleck was, a, you know, was a superhero before that because he was actually Daredevil. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm cool with that, you know? And we do know that Ben Affleck is, you know, older than Robert Pattinson. But I don't understand how this Batman is going to be in its prime. In its prime of what, exactly? Is it... In its prime of the detective side, because that's the side that we're promised to see in this film, you know, or is it the prime side of, you know, the awesome crime fighting side of Batman, you know what I'm saying? But then when you think about it, you're like, so you're telling me that Ben Affleck's version wasn't in his prime? Because if you guys remember in Batman versus Superman, he took out a warehouse full of guys and not to mention he fought a fucking Kryptonian who was damn near invincible. You know what I'm saying? And he never gave up. Then after that, he came in Justice League and fought goddamn parademons. You know what I'm saying? And he took a punch from Wonder Woman. So come on, you can't tell me that Ben Affleck's version was not in his prime. It's impossible. That guy really devoted his part into you know the film and he lived up to the expectations because a lot of people did not know what ben affleck would bring to the table when he was becoming batman you know a lot of people still wanted christian bale and then when you think about christian bale you can't you can't honestly tell me that he wasn't in his prime either you know what i'm saying when you look at that film that batman also had to be in, in the late 20s and early 30s taking on Bane, of all people, you know what I'm saying, undersized, he was taking on Bane, like, come on, man, <laughs> look at Christian Bale's Batman to Ben Affleck's Batman, Ben Affleck got juiced up, you know what I'm saying, to, to fit the role, you know, to make him look like he, you know, he lived that life, you know what I'm saying, like, he wasn't just a regular person running around in a bat suit, he had to make himself look a little super, you know, so like, come on, just just them putting this out there is it, crazy. And this is not a tweet from, you know, well, not created by the Gotham Hub. This is, you know, just a repost of an interview with Matt Reeves. So they have tweeted this out to everyone, you know what I'm saying? Because their Twitter page pretty much keeps you up to date with everything related to Gotham, you know, whether, it, as I said, if it's you know, the new Batman or anything that's happening in the DC universe or the TV universe, everything that pertains to Batman and its family and its associated villains, this Twitter page, you can find news and updates on it. 
So as I said, you know, they posted this and this just threw me for a world because I don't get it, you know? So my question to you guys would be, do you think that Ben Affleck's version was in his prime or was he, you know, old? Because when you think about it, you know, like common sense, no one's age is really revealed in these films, you know what I'm saying? So we can, we speculate at most, but we do know that Ben Affleck was, you know, his actual age, you know what I'm saying? Like he's closing in to 50 and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, you, you take that and I guess you just, <laughs> you speculate off of what Batman's age in the film would actually be. Well, actually, let's take a look at the tweet. So it says Reeves, who was hired to write and direct a new Batman movie in February 2017, was envisioning actors while penning the script, according to sources familiar with the filmmakers thinking. It helped that this new Batman needed to conform to a defined age bracket. He is written as around 30 years old and the story is neither another rehashing of his origin nor the tale of a seasoned crime fighter ruling Gotham City. He is Bruce Wayne still trying to find his footing on his way to becoming the genius detective. So that is the whole entire tweet, the whole entire um, little statement provided by Matt Reeves. So it says basically, 30 years old, it's not a rehashing of his origin nor the tale of a seasoned crime fighter ruling Gotham City. He is Bruce Wayne still trying to find his footing on his way to becoming the genius detective. So I'm not sure how he is exactly in its prime if you word it the way that you have, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I reading this wrong, guys? Let me know in the comment section because I don't get it. It would sound to me, if he's still trying to find his footing, this will be a rookie Batman, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like a year one Batman. Like, this is crazy. To mention Prime is really big. I'm sorry if I'm taking it to another level, but this is the way that I feel, you know what I'm saying? But as I said, I love to be educated by you guys. So you guys can tell me your thoughts in the comment section, because maybe I'm taking this a little too serious. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I need to double down and reread it, you know, go back through the sources, you know what I'm saying? Check other um, outsource medias or something. Let me know in the comment section, please. I love to be educated by you guys. And let me know your thoughts on this as well. As I say, you know, write in the comment section. Do you believe that Ben Affleck's version was in his prime or was he an old man, you know, off the juice? <laughs> because I don't understand. Like, this is really, really weird for me, you know? Just for them to put this out there and then throw in the word prime, but yet he's still trying to find his footing into becoming the genius detective that he already is. That's crazy. That is so crazy. Now, I did actually write a comment on there, so I'm just waiting for, you know, someone to actually write me back. Hopefully the Gotham Hub will actually, you know, respond back to my tweet and I just wrote it you know pretty short pretty simple I said wow so Ben version wasn't in his prime I'm confused because obviously like I said I am confused like you mean to tell me Ben and Bale's version wasn't in their prime like I don't get it you know but it is what it is then you take a look at some of the other tweets one person wrote, um, if the DCU wants to even begin to compete with Marvel, they need to stop rebooting franchises and continue the storylines already started. The only way Batman should get younger is if he found the Lazarus Pit, then have him rejoin the existing Justice League. Now that right there is perfectly said, you know what I'm saying? But I doubt if they're going to, you know, introduce the Lazarus Pit. Um, that's something like 
along the lines of actually introducing the character of Ray Jal Ghul. You know, and that's something that we actually had on the Gotham series, which ran on Fox. And there was a Lazarus Pit there. And we also had the Lazarus Pit thrown around in the Arrow show, which was airing on the CW. You know what I'm saying? So if they were to actually do this in the movie, you know, universe, this would be big. It would be very interesting and very big to see how you know, effective the Lazarus pick can be on someone. Now, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Sorry, guys. Let me backtrack. Because when you think about it, um, when they brought back Superman, that was sort of like a Lazarus pick kind of situation. And I think it was teased around by Batman. Um, so I'm sorry, but I caught myself there, guys. As you can see, I caught myself. Um, but like I said, still the idea if they were to introduce something like this in the universe, you know what I'm saying, um, primarily in like a Batman solo film, that would be something, you know, and he jumps in and comes out, you know, a couple of years younger, then you can say, okay, Batman is now back to being in his prime, you know what I'm saying, um, but it's just it's just weirdly confusing, you know, the fact that they mix that together, you know what I'm saying? Because it makes you think back to all the other versions of Batman, you know what I'm saying? So as a fan, you know what I'm saying, I have to take these necessary um, you know, looks into detail because <laughs> this shit'll kill you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not not like physically kill you, but this shit will like blow your mind just knowing that this stuff is being said about this version of Batman and you look at every other Batman that you had and you're like, so those Batmans weren't in their prime? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Were they old men? Were they rookies? You know what I'm saying? What were they? So just let me know your thoughts, you know? Um... Uh, we would have, we would be until the followed up with he's not the seasoned crime fighter yet, trying to find his footing, getting yet another inexperienced Batman. That's what one person said, an inexperienced Batman. You know that's kind of true. You know what I'm saying? Because this is Robert Pattinson, as I said. You know, being uh like a a supernatural creature is different. You know slightly than a uh, superhero you know what i'm saying because superheroes <laughs> there's limitations and stuff like that he's a supernatural creature that can only be stopped by you know like a stake to the heart or some kind of silver or some shit or as you can see what was going on in the twilight films you know i hate to talk about twilight because i'm really not a fan of it like there were funny parts in a movie that made me laugh about it, but I'm just really not a fan of Twilight. Um, so wait, does this movie still take place in the 90s? And is it still connected to the DCEU because Batman will be in his 50s in the present? Now that is another concern in which, you know, a lot of people are wondering, first off, the film is said to not be connected to the DCU, the DCEU, excuse me. So this is kind of like, um, I wouldn't say an Elseworld story because it's still Batman, but it's just, well, it's hard to, it's hard to really say because as they mentioned in the tweet, it's not an origin. So it's kind of hard, you know what I'm saying, for them to make this film and not connect it to the universe. But then when you think about it, it's really not hard at all. Because when you look at other universes, like, for example, the uh, DC TV universe, they have um, Black Lightning, which is not connected to the Arrow universe, which is not connected to the multi-universe. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, he exists and... They know of other characters within that universe, hence the names that they mentioned, you know, back in, uh, what was that, season two, when they mentioned Vixen and Supergirl in um, Black Lightning. So they kind of knew about those characters, 
but for some reason the show wasn't connected to the universe and they had no participations in the big crossovers that actually happened so you know they can do stuff like that you know and a better example would definitely be the upcoming Joker film, um, the Joaquin Phoenix version. Now that is like an Elseworlds story and it's also not connected to the DCEU. Um, now the reason why they're doing this, honestly, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, you know, as far as the DCEU goes, um, as one person mentioned, they're rebooting all of the franchises, they're casting younger, I don't know exactly what's going on. You know, they're not continuing stories. They're pushing stories further back. As you can see with the whole Man of Steel 2 situation, they don't want to focus on that film right now because they're focusing on Supergirl's film that's supposed to be, you know, being put into production with the script writing and the casting and the directors being, you know, casted as well. So... It's, it's, it's a big mess in the DCEU. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but I'm still a fan. You know, I'm going to give this Batman film a chance. But, you know, all these tweets and rumors and theories and stuff, I just wish they stopped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm catching them in, you know, by just general, you know, realization. A lot of people are realizing that I might be overreacting, but... At the same time, I'm not wrong to overreact because I am a fan. You know what I'm saying? We just want the perfect Batman on screen. I mean, on screen, excuse me. <laughs> Even got me messing up my own words. We just want the perfect Batman on screen. We just want the perfect version of the Justice League on screen. You know what I'm saying? And we want these stories to be told correctly. You know, this is, you know vaguely one of the reasons why that you have a lot of the actors who actually participated in you know their roles that's the reason why they're starting to leave now because of these stories and they're taking it you know in the wrong directions because when you think about it the person that plays cyborg and ezra miller the person that played the flash in justice league both those characters are walking away from the DCEU. They don't want to have nothing to do with their characters and their storylines anymore. And at this point, you can't blame them because no one knows exactly where they're going with these stories. The Flash film, it was like up in the air. It was ready to go, but then they started taking away at it, adding more things. They wanted to cast the reverse Flash and didn't know exactly what the hell they were doing. So... It's just like a big mess at the DCEU, but we're still proud fans and we can't wait for another film. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully, you know, Wonder Woman 2 lives up to the hype because I'm super ready for that. You have uh, Cheetah who's going to make an appearance in there. So that should be a huge brawl, big fight between Wonder Woman and Cheetah, two powerful Two strong women, two very fast women, too, at that. You know, so that's going to be a David versus Goliath match. And if it's done properly, maybe that will help, you know, keep the DCEU together. You know what I'm saying? Like a glue. Because when Wonder Woman 1 came out, that shit was super dope, you know. So I'm glad that they're deciding to follow up on it, you know. Um, Man of Steel was pretty good, you know. Um, it kind of sucked that they kept pushing back Man of Steel 2. So, you know, we don't know when exactly that's going to come out. And then there's a rumor that they're casting a new Superman as well. If you guys have seen the tweets and um, all the YouTube videos on it, there's a chance that uh, there will be a black suit. I mean, well, not a black suit, just a black Superman, <laughs> you know, an African-American. Um, and most people are hinting at Michael B. Jordan, you know, and it's not a bad, you know, it's not a bad casting, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, like, not exactly sure if they would, if they would go this way or if they should go this way, shall I say, because, you know, the multiverse theory has to be explained and they have to actually you know, visit another universe, 
in order for you to introduce like an African American version of Superman because I believe there was a black Superman on Earth 2. I think that's where he came from. So it'll be very interesting, you know what I'm saying, everything that is going to happen within the next couple of years in the DCEU universe. So you know, let's get ready for a wild ride. That's all I have to say in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted that to be brought to your attentions. Once again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. As I said, I love to be educated. If you felt I was wrong about something, tell me. If you felt I missed out on something, tell me. If you agree with me, tell me. If you disagree, tell me. You know what I'm saying? Anything that you have to say pertaining to the subject of the Batman or anything related to the DCEU universe, let me know in the comments section. It has been very great talking to you guys. I love the support and everybody hitting that like button and playing and listening to my videos in spite of the buzzing noises in the background. You guys definitely are the best. So give yourselves a round of applause. We shall keep growing on this channel as long as the support keeps coming. So subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, make sure your post notifications are turned on, and share this channel with your friends and family members. The more subscribers I have, the more videos I can put out for you guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.